How we doing? I'm joined by Joel and Ryan from Umphreys today. How we doing, guys? Doing great. How are you, Kevin? Fantastic, fantastic. Good to see you again, Joel. Um, you okay. guys have had an interesting year. Uh, how is Chris doing? He is uh, on the road to recovery. He, uh, you know, I think we're going to have a nice surprise on our New Year's run, and uh, we're planning on him being back full time come uh, come tour in January. Yeah, last time I spoke with him, he said that he is uh, his shoulder is is uh, better than it was before. So he has it's like RoboCop. He's got the new RoboCop shoulder. So you've had like twenty drummers, right? I think fifteen was the. Uh, it, it might be sixteen by the time we get Mike Portnoy and I, has Rory played with us in this? Maybe it'll be seventeen with Mike and Rory. Yeah, yeah we'll go with seventeen. Yeah, yeah. It's that could been, become its uh, own special release right there, just with all the different drummers. Totally, totally. Um, it's honestly, it, it went better than we expected. I guess we, we you know, the, the hard thing was that we found out about four weeks before our first tour date that Chris was out. So, you know, we didn't have much time to prep, and thankfully some of our friends were off the road, so we got kind of lucky with that. How did that work? Did you send a list of songs or was anything on the table or were specific songs for specific drummers? No, I think anything was on the table. I mean, everybody was uh, first and foremost, very supportive of, of Chris and uh, his surgery and, and him being away. And they wanted to be, um, they felt honored and, and, and the, the brothership there to come up and say, Hey, I'll, I'll try and do this. Um, and each of them, each drummer in their own definitely put in their time shedding and they learned a lot of our uh, more complicated uh, um, compositions. And then we were able to go through um, what covers they knew and some covers that we were never able to play. And it just became um, uh, really easy and a lot of fun. Um, and if I can touch a little more of like the academic part as a bass player, um, the role of a bass player playing with a new drummer, especially playing our original compositions was um, was mind blowing. It was, it was so fun to, to accept the challenge of like, I am a bass player here as a drummer. What are the dynamics? How are we going to communicate? How are we locking up? How, how do the jams change? How do they play differently with each other? And what exactly is my role? So that was fun for each tour for me to, uh, to you know, really just grow as a musician and as a bass player and as, and as a, a part of that rhythm section. So did anything come of any of those shows where you sat back and you're like, wow, that's different or something kind of new that maybe you hadn't approached before in the same way? A hundred percent. Absolutely. Uh, each musician and each drummer um, have completely different personalities and completely different styles. So adapting to those, it was we, we knew it was going to come. So some nights um, were much more patient, longer, longer, taking a lot more time to uh to figure out, you know, our comfort zone and where things were going to build or, or, or drop down. And um, I think the, the patience and the openness between all the musicians was something that was uh, that I, that I love the most, you know, that we were all going in this together. We were all very excited about it. And we really just wanted to take our time to create really good improvisational pieces. Yeah, no doubt. I, I, you know, just kind of echoing a lot of what Ryan said, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of extra rehearsal, as you can imagine. So our days were a little bit different than uh, the typical Humphreys tour day, uh, just playing a lot more. Um, but I think it was cool the experience of going back and practicing songs that otherwise we'd have no other reason to be in the rehearsal room working on things. So um, it it kind of got us back to the basics on you know I mean a song like All in Time. When's the last time we practiced that? Like 2001, probably. You know, we we played enough. It's like played every five shows. So it's not like we get rusty on that one. Um, but yeah, just kind of hearing the different drummers' interpretations. I think the other funny thing that we kind of realized was some of these songs were more complicated than we experience them now. Uh, all these little, you know, hitches and extra bars of something we have internalized and that, that stuff is just second nature now, but you know, then 
we get asked the question of like, well, how do you guys count this? And I'm like, I don't count that. <laughs> I just, I just feel it. I know how it goes, you know? So we had to kind of go back and figure out like, okay, what is, what is actually going on here and how is this counted? So how does it affect the improvisational part of it, having the different drummers? I mean, I'd say for the most part, it kind of opened things up for us to be a little more creative and for us to push a little further. Um, with Chris, there's we have such confidence about, you know, where things are going or what these parts are going to be. And, uh, you know, I know Ryan would say the same thing. Brennan did such a nice job with all the guest drummers kind of, you know, throwing cues and making sure that they knew what the next thing was that was coming up. I know that feeling of like being up on stage and you're like, all right, something's coming, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> so uh, I think there was a lot of uh, the, everybody did their homework and everybody was really into pushing boundaries and, you know, taking improvisation uh, in some cases further than we have uh, previously. I think our song, uh, staircase for instance you know we hit the 20 minute mark a couple times uh with ben with that and that was a song that i don't think had been longer than you know 12 or 13 minutes uh live previously yeah and to touch further on what joel said um when you know as our original six lineup chris also has a talk back mic that um he confidently uses and having drummers especially new drummers coming in it's not like they're going to come in and start telling us what to do. It's just very natural for them to be comfortable and, and feel out where the music's going to go. Um, so there was a lot more, um, I guess, just when you're missing one person who's usually helped directing things, it came down to more Joel, Jake, Brandon, and myself using talkbacks if we needed them, um, but a lot more not using the talkbacks at all and just extending those jams, um, which also helps the drummers not have to play as many songs per night, you know, where, you know, learning in the jam band world, you can do seven, six to seven songs per set and really explore the space and, 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 and try out all different genres of music. Whereas if you're playing just the songs, um, it's a lot more homework for them too. It, it was nice at the end of a night to be like, wow, man, we scratched four songs. Well, Hey, we already know them. We've rehearsed them. We can play those tomorrow. So, so that was nice too, to, uh, just a, uh, just a lot more patience, I guess I would say, all around. I think you had mentioned that last week you were in the studio. Were you just rehearsing? Was it anything more than that? Ah, it was more than that. Uh, Ryan and I had a uh, Nashville rendezvous with uh, Greg Majors, who is uh, a longtime Humphreys engineer and sort of, uh, I, I would say, like, he, he's really good at helping us uh, – with arrangements of our original material. Um, and he's also a great, uh, great guy with vocals. So, you know, our last album, Masking for a Friend, we had some really kind of exciting, and I feel like we, we hit some new ground with some of the vocal arrangement stuff. Um, but yeah, Ryan and I got together with, uh, with Greg, and we, we have, uh, right now, it's uh, the 2024 Humphreys album pile, uh, you know, google uh drive thing link that's going on so we have i mean it's got to be up to about like 30 or 35 different ideas that we put in there and some of them are short as like you know a riff that we're like okay this needs to go with something but it needs other parts so um you know ryan and i went in there and we we did kind of our uh, our lego thing a little bit try to find some pieces that might fit together and then we also did some writing and you know, when we didn't have anything to go with it, we said, let's just let's try to write a couple parts now and um, just kind of get the skeletons of ideas up and leave some spaces for the guitar players to come in and uh, and, and vocalists, for that matter, to, to add things later. Yeah. And to, to touch on that, Greg has also uh, been such a, a good friend of ours that he's very comfortable with telling us when parts absolutely suck and don't work. No one's no one's feelings are getting hurt. Um, from the minute we woke up and got in there, we were just trying to throw as much at the wall to, to see, Hey, does this, does this work? Could this be used for something else? And there were a lot of times where we felt we were forcing things together and we'd be like, nah, that is its complete own idea. 
Um, that sucks with that. And, and we, we have thick skin. We can, you know, we, we understand that everything that comes out isn't going to be perfect and, and great all the time. And that's really nice to work with people that are uh, willing to have that brutal honesty, but, but still uh, push you and motivate you to, to move forward. And then uh, Chris came over and said hello. And we had not seen Chris for five months. Um, and he got behind the kit and uh, helped uh, write a B section to one of our funkier dance tunes. Um, and a, a part we'll probably keep. It was, it, it was really good. And it just felt really great to play with him and be in the room. And, and that was just a little sense of what's to come uh, for 2024 when we get back together. You know, it's like riding a bike. Let's touch on New Year's. And then I want to get into UM Bowl because that's what I originally reached out to you about. You have a New Year's run coming up. This We're going to get an episode out before. So um, you want to talk a little bit about that? Anything we can... Any thing you want to spill the beans about beforehand? Well, you know, never want to spill the beans too much, but this one is, of course, a really unique uh, run for us because we've got three different drummers that we've announced. Uh, Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater, uh, Ben Atkin from Goose, and Rory Dolan from The Special. And so... You know, getting to prepare with these guys and having all these different conversations going on about, okay, what is everybody going to learn in advance? And, you know, we had to make sure we we, we have some fights right now over uh, 1348 puppet string. You know, everybody wants to play those plunger. Uh, so we're, we're trying to keep everybody happy with that. But um, Mike Pornoy in particular has been really fun because, you know, we have so many common roots of bands that we like together. And as you know, with Humphreys, we've probably played like 750 or so covers over our career. So we try to go back and mine a few of these that we haven't played in a long time that were up Mike's alley. And we're, uh, we're going to be busting a few things out with him. I'm really excited about that. Uh, Ryan, I'll let you take over as I have another plane going over. Go ahead. Uh, I think Joel pretty summed it up pretty much right there. I, I do think that it's interesting that we have three drummers that want to play the same song, but for some jam band law, we're not allowed to play it with. We can play it over three nights as an extended thing, you know, like string the whole thing together. Right. Just one long <laughs> plunger. Uh, no, I'm, I'm very excited to play with all of these drummers. Uh, ben, we've played with four. He's a great guy. Um, Rory, we've played with four and never performed with Mike Portnoy before, too. So that'll be very special for to have him with us before he reunites with uh, Dream Theater. Um, what else, Joel? Well, you know, again, just um, alluding to the fact that we're uh, we're very excited for our not officially announced uh, drummer that will be uh, will joining us at some point on the run as well. And, uh, you know, getting, getting back on the horse that, uh, that is Humphreys. I know, I, I feel like all this time that Chris has been gone, there's been so much appreciation on the scene from both the fans and the other drummers that, um, you know, we, we all kind of just got this warm, fuzzy feeling from it of, you know, like, oh man, Chris is like really beloved by, uh, by all these people. And so it was great for us and especially great for him as he was going through and, you know, it's been working his ass off on PT and, you know, it's like, you're almost there, man, you're almost there. Uh, so yeah, I think it'll be, we're going to have some really special moments on this, uh, this new year's run. And this will be unlike any other new year's run we've done before, but, uh, Closing out 25 years in Chicago at the Riv really felt like the the right place to do this. So I know we're uh, we're excited to kind of bring it back home to where a lot of our most important musical memories have happened. 